When I heard the news last week that Pastor Andrew Brunson had been released from captivity in Turkey, I th thought my heart would explode with joy. But then, what he did several days later, well, that just blew my mind. Here was a man who had spent 23 years of his life faithfully serving the Lord, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in a very, very dark place, only to have to then endure the kind of persecution and suffering, the likes of which most of us will never know or experience. And what is one of the first things that Andrew Brunson does when he returns to America, a place he thought he may never see again? He gets on his knees in the Oval Office and prays over the President of the United States of America, the most powerful man in the world. Listen to what Pastor Brunson prayed to the Lord. I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on President Trump, that you give him supernatural wisdom to accomplish all the plans you have for this country. I ask that you give him wisdom in how to lead this country into righteousness. I ask that you give him perseverance and endurance and courage to stand for truth. When Pastor Brunson was released from captivity. He didn't speak death, he spoke life into the world and words of encouragement and hope and truth. Listen to what he had to say recently when he was asked about his darkest days in captivity. It seemed that there was no way out, he says. I lost a lot of hope, but I began to see that there was value in my suffering. I saw that many people around the world were praying for me. His wife was able to visit him once a week for about a half hour, and in that time, she encouraged him by telling him that people all over the world were praying for him, people like me and maybe you. And he says, I began to see that God was involved with this, and God was going to do something with my suffering that had value. He couldn't have possibly seen that would God would give him that kind of platform to be in the Oval Office to pray over the President of the United States of America, but he knew God was up to something good. He didn't lose hope in captivity. He gained hope and strength and courage, and God prepared him in that time for the platform that he would give him to speak truth and hope into this world. Listen to what Paul teaches in 1 Thessalonians. But after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. Paul was determined, no matter what kind of opposition or suffering he endured, to please God by proclaiming God's truth, no matter what man thought of him. And Pastor Brunson took that same approach to his suffering. He allowed God to prepare him for a platform that he would one day give him. And when God gave him that platform, wow, did Pastor Brunson hit it out of the park. Suffering can either break us into silence or it can embolden us to proclaim God's truth in a world that desperately needs to hear it. Is God preparing you today through struggle and suffering? Will you allow it to break you into silence or to embolden you to proclaim God's truth? in this world that desperately needs to hear it.